Everybody, Seller here at the championship, checking in team number 341, Miss Daisy, a legendary team uh, coming throughout the Ace Course Hall of Fame as well, too. Miss Daisy has an absolutely fantastic climber uh, on the roll, but their entire system is really the complete package. Of course, we'll be going through the ball path as well, covering climber, both programming and mechanical side here on Behind the Bumper. So help me do that, by the way. I have Anderson, Owen, Aiden, and Anuya. And this robot here looks so good. I can't wait to go more into it and tell you what happens each time they play. Here, coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now is supported by Kettering University. If you want to continue enjoying the excitement of robotics, come check out what's going on at Kettering University, including their combat battle bots team and first center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Be sure to apply to Kettering beginning in August of 2022. Go to kettering.edu slash apply to learn more. Stream your off-season event on Fun for free. Events that stream on Fun on average receive 50 to 100% additional viewership. Dates are already starting to fill up, so email admin at firstupdatesnow.com to stream your event on Fun. So Anderson, we're gonna start out at your centerpiece here is your uh, hanger and your climbers to so talk to me a little bit more about what's gone into it and I know uh, we'll have others contributing in with it as well. Sure, all right, so the hanger consists of a uh, different uh, amount of uh, hooks. Uh, each hook is a uh, 84 tooth gear that we hollowed out with a lathe uh, and it has multiple plates of half in or quarter inch uh, aluminum plating that we uh, used, uh, that we sent to our sponsor to make for us. Um, driving the each hook is a gear and a bevel gear that we've purchased from uh, Versa with a Neo 550 on each of them. Uh, and I'm sure either Aiden or Nuhia can go into the limit switches, which is the programming aspect of it. So you, yeah, pass off the next person who wants to go a little bit more into it. Uh, tell us more about what's gone into uh, other parts of your climbing here that makes it so special. Uh, thank you. Uh, one thing that we're really, really proud of with this climb is that it's actually like fully automated. We've used limit switches here as well as integrated sensors with the Neos and a can coder on this shaft right over other side here. With all of this, we're able to constantly tell the position of each hook as well as the arm itself. We use that to go to like both known set points as well as to run the uh, shoulder until each of these limit switches is pressed. And we're able to use that to go from facing the mid bars directly onto traversal oh, with no significant operator intervention. So Anuya, why don't you run us through, uh, give us a little bit of narration on what's going on. So the first thing we're going to do is work with the driver controller to um, level up the arm so it's just a zero degree. Um, next up is just the operator. The first stage is going 90 degrees straight up, so we can actually drive up to the mid-bar, which is this. Once we hit the mid-bar, the limit switches will activate and the hooks will close. Then we move on to the next stage, which is rotating to the mid to the high bar. Here, the limit switches will once again activate and the hooks will close. And we repeat the process, kick off the mid-bar and rotate to the traversal. Once we hit that, again, our hooks close. And then our last stage, we can go of the high bar and then locking onto traversal. And then we've got the rainbow LEDs, obviously, to show that we've done our climb. How long does it take you to typically climb? Typically, I think it takes about 10 to 15 seconds. And then for Miss Daisy, uh, you're really proud of your climb right now. What, what made it, when you're looking at the game in particular, like, what made you say, hey, this is the most important part of a robot. This is where we want to focus on a lot for our season. I think it was a lot about, like, in the beginning of the season, we had a weighted objective table. And because of how many points we could get from one climb, it was really important to us that we get as much of, I don't know, time, resources, effort into the climb. Sure. So that we had the best possible chances of winning. So that was really our main objective. You still have a great rest of your robot, so I definitely want to go through some of the ball pathing of that. Owen, take us through uh, your intake, what you've been using for that, and uh, what's gone into it. Um, so for our intake, actually, if we could deploy it, please. Um, so the intake is composed mostly of Lexan plates. Now, this was actually an intentional decision. We felt that with this game, there would be uh, some potential heavy defense. So as you can see here, we intentionally made our intake flexible so that it could take hits from other robots and um, it could not break. So we've been... Uh, in addition, that was also to preserve the health of our pistons. This season, we actually haven't bent a piston thanks to our more flexible intake. If you notice, on the outside of the intake, we have these 3D printed mechanism wheels, which help funnel the balls into the compression wheels up here, or the compliance wheels. So we have the, the squishier compliance wheels here, and then a bit more of a firmer compliance wheel here as it brings it 
into the rest of the ball path. For your intake, are, uh, any big iterations or changes throughout the season that you made at all? Um, yes, so our strategy this season was we really wanted to focus on the hangar. So we were originally gonna do more of a uh, intake that deploys upwards. We currently have a through the bumper intake, but we were originally planning an over the bumper intake. However, due to constraints from the climber, we quickly realized that we would have to do a through the bumper intake. Um, so that was our design process really for the bumper. And Anderson, take us into your conveyor and shooter. Tell us a little bit more about that uh, process. Then we're gonna uh, send it back and talk more of the programming side as well then too. All right, so the conveyor is a pretty simple thing. It's a, uh, the ball goes through these, uh, Orange, uh, sorry, orange uh, ropes pull it through the robot. Uh, they go through these little conveyor spots and then it goes up to the shooter. The conveyor is very simple, there's a beam break in there. Uh, once it gets to the shooter, there are two uh, Carson wheels that, use, uh, that are used to spin the actual uh, ball and shoot up to speed that are uh, shot independently. Uh, originally, we were going with a low shooter, but uh, over time we uh, adapted and we were able to go high here pretty consistently, uh, which we are very proud of. Yeah. Um, keeps us competitive. Uh, yeah. What did you have to, to adapt in order to go from low to high? Like, what changes did you have to make? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, so originally we had smaller wheels and uh, we weren't able to shoot as fast. Okay. Uh, we just recently uh, updated the wheels, uh, put a little bit more compression on the ball, got it to shoot a little bit further. Uh, going back to the LEDs and the um, conveyor belt, actually, uh, there's a little sensor in there to, to indicate how many balls are actually in the robot. Uh, when it's yellow, um, uh, the, sorry, the two balls. Uh, when it's blue, the, uh, then we have balls. Uh, if it's green, then uh, we're in the right spot. If it's red, we're in the wrong spot. If it's yellow, then it's just one ball. Um, for your team, now you've gone starting to shoot a uh, high hub as well too. Uh, where's kind of your sweet spot to shoot from? The sweet spot is around the tarmac. Sure. Awesome. Well, let's uh, send it back over to Nuhia to talk more about uh, any sensors and stuff. And then if anybody else wants to wrap up on your robot, we'll go through that too. Okay, absolutely. We've got two main sensors that do all of the ball cueing. We've got a beam break down here and another one up here. This is right near the intake, so as soon as the ball comes in, we can increment it. And as soon as the ball goes up near the shooter, we can decrement the, decrement the ball cue. As Hobart mentioned, we do have um, LEDs to signal to the operator when to do whatever actions they need to do. The yellow LEDs mean there's two balls in the two balls in the robot. The purple LEDs means there's one. If we're blue, we're too close to the goal. If we're red, we're too far. And green is perfect to shoot. So after that, we also have the limelight up here, which is our main te test of distance. The limelight allows us to. Um, figure out where the robot or sorry where the robot is in relative to the goal so we know the distance from the goal and that allows us to use our rpm tables to get a consistent shot we also have this beam break here to make sure that um as we let out one ball our rpm for the actual wheels actually decreases so we have to like pull back the second ball to make sure for consistency's sake um and then we let the RPM come back to speed and then we shoot the second ball. So that allows us to get both balls in consistently and that's really mostly it for programming. Can we see a piece of cargo come in just maybe uh, demonstrate that process and Aiden, anything else you want to add uh, as well too in the robot? Absolutely. One last thing I'd hit on with this shooter here is that we do all of like the loop control of this on board with these Neo motors. Uh, we run it in the shooter primarily with what's called a feed forward term. We use a percentage of our max output to dictate how fast the wheels go. And with that, we are able to get a consistent speed uh, quickly, though we also use feedback control to ensure that we are getting to the set point regardless of ball conditions and conditions in terms of things like the voltage of the battery. Well, 341, an amazing machine uh, you had here uh, today. We really appreciate you taking time to tell us more about your robot uh, and wish you best of luck as we're filming this. Uh, end of day two, going to the playoffs, so can't wait to see how you do there. So thanks a lot for the time and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. If you want to continue enjoying the excitement of robotics, come check out what's going on at Kettering University, including their Combat BattleBots team and First Center. Turn your robotics experience into a professional career. Be sure to apply to Kettering beginning in August of 2022. Go to kettering.edu apply to learn more. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.